Hello, hello. It's Celeste of Astrology by Celeste. Yes, it is on this Friday afternoon. It's Venus's day. I love it. Yes, I do. Hi, A. How Zep? And twice, but nice. Nice to see you. And Simeon and Nadia, welcome, welcome, everyone. Let me pull up the chart for right now. On this beautiful day we have here with the sun in Capricorn and the moon in Aries. Yes, yes. Hi, everyone. Hi, Lily. Hi, Kristen. Let's see who else. Oh, and ooh, Livia. Nice to see everyone. I think I got everyone. And Raven, welcome, welcome. Hi, Karen. And Aurora Astro Coach. And Nancy, welcome. I'm having a cosmic conversation today with Dawn. Let me see if I can invite her. Here she is. Let me hit invite. Hi, Rosa Luna. So nice to see you. Welcome, everyone. Yes. So today we have Mars. I think it was earlier today where Mars and Jupiter made their trine. So hopefully you're feeling this beautiful energy. Hi, Dawn. How are Hi. you? I'm good. Hi. Thanks, Celeste. How I'm are you? Doing really well. I'm so excited to talk to you. Me too. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. All right. Hey, well, why don't you introduce yourself for anybody who is new to you and everyone you can follow Dawn or myself if you're new to me by clicking the little carrot at the top and you don't even have to leave the live. You can just say follow. Okay. All right. So my name is Dawn Harrison. I am an astrologer and tarot reader here in the New York City area. I am also a full-time structural engineer as well uh, and a single mother of an incredible 17-year-old daughter. Um, I have been a professional tarot and astrologer for a tarot reader and astrologer for roughly 10 years, but I've been studying since my Saturn return which was quite some time ago roughly 20 years ago so i'm aging and dating myself um but yeah so i'm here to talk about the integration of astrology and tarot because when i learned uh these wonderful practices i learned them together and i don't know how many people have learned them together like that but that that's the way i did and so i would love to talk to people about that integration and how I use it in my practice. They may want to try some things as well. And I would love to hear other people integrate Tarot into their astrology practice as well. If, you know, we've got those people here today. Yeah. I love that. I started with astrology and then moved to Tarot. And I feel like it, it, it yeah, they, they are <laughs> such natural companions. It's just beautiful to use the two systems together. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now, where do you have Saturn and what sign and what house that your Saturn return brought you studying astrology? I know. Okay. Good question. My Saturn is in Cancer. Um, it is conjunct my Mercury. It is technically in the uh, fifth house. I use the Placidus system. It's close enough to the six to be read in the six, though. But yeah, that, that's kind of where it's sitting. Oh, okay. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Saturn conjunct Mercury. You start studying astrology. That's good. And an exact square to Pluto. So maybe that's uh, part of it as well. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm, okay. okay. Thank, thank you for the badge, Karen. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So tell us, give us where should we start with where how you we use them together? Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, so every card in the tarot can be associated with one or more um, astrological symbols, right? Whether it's a planet, whether it's a sign. Um, and so I'm going to give you some, show you some examples. Some people may be familiar with this. Some people may not. If you've got a tarot deck on hand that you want to look at while we're having this discussion, um, that might be a beautiful thing to do. Um, but I'm going to just give you some examples, uh, you know, some of my favorite examples of the astrological correspondences with the tarot. And then we'll talk a little bit about how you can use this, not only in your astrology practice, but like as a, as a spiritual practice, because in my opinion, I I mean, these, you know, these practices, they're spiritual practices, and they're such wonderful ways for us to establish and 
nurture a connection with you know whatever our conception of the you know divine is so let's what tarot deck do you have there i have um three different decks that we're oh. going to just kind of look at because right. you know because they all have um a slightly different feel to them but i want to show you how um different uh tarot creators and artists oh, I love integrate that. you know um astrology kind of into into their art right and into their craft so um i've got two zero marchetti decks here and i've got uh the uh thoth deck right that was designed by alistair crowley and lady frida harris and that was the deck that i used exclusively for the first 10 years of my practice because i studied with a teacher who kind of thought it was like sacrilegious to use any other okay. deck. <laughs> okay <laughs> but, but anyway um but all the decks that i'm going to show you today integrate in you know the astrological symbols in a really really beautiful and meaningful way and i think if you are new to integrating um astrology into your tarot practice or tarot into your astrology practice using a deck that makes the correspondences very very clear is like one of the best things to do mm -hmm. i think um all right so let's just let's just start with a few things here um and if anybody has requests to see kind of like a correspondence i'm happy to kind of show you that okay. let me see, see if they're well fred the witch is it's so ex the fred witch is so excited <laughs> to see us together wins <laughs> art loves you fred loves combining them yes hi melanie <laughs> Karen, Boo is sick. So my Boo came back from his three-week journey in Uruguay, and he must have picked up something on the plane, Aww. and hopefully he didn't give it to me, but now he is sick. So, yeah, we're having oh. a time. <laughs> He's having the Saturn squaring his mood. Oh my yeah. goodness. You know, you know what correspondence I'm going to start with? I'm actually going to start with or correspondence that's associated with both Saturn and Pisces. Because we've got Saturn and Pisces right now, don't we? So yes. That's a really cool one to look at. So now, one of my favorite cards that illustrates this correspondence is from the Sierra Marchetti deck. Um, this is not Tarot of Dreams. This is the um, Legacy of the Divine Tarot. But I'm going to show you this. I hope you guys can see it. It's really, you know, the, with the split screen here, I'm like wondering if you can see this. Yes. But Lift guys, it up just a little bit higher. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. we can see it. So do you see this sort of beautiful depiction of the Pisces mm -hmm. symbol in here? Mm -hmm. You see a man kind of in the water and it's almost if he's walking away from something, but also walking towards something probably very uh, sacred um, and perhaps private. And so, you know, when I think of Saturn and Pisces, and there's so many ways that we can conceptualize uh, Saturn's transit through Pis Pisces, but certainly I think um, one of the ways that we can think of Saturn and Pisces in our personal lives, right, is that call, I think, to sacred space. Uh, and which card was that? Was that I'm the sorry. Six of Cups? Or? Sorry, this was the Eight of Cups. I didn't even tell you which card it was. The Eight of Cups is okay. that correspondence with Saturn and Pisces. Um, in the Thoth deck, this correspondence looks a bit like this, so it's a little bit different, but what I do love about the Thoth deck is that you, on every card, there is sort of, you know, you'll see the symbol. So, you know, if you were to look at this real close, you'll see the Saturn up top, mm -hmm. and I believe mm -hmm. you'll see the Pisces down at the bottom, if you look really close here. But again, you get this sense, you know what I mean? Obviously, this is a very watery, watery card, but that, you know, there is a kind of, um, hmm, this card almost has a, a little bit of a, a, a beautiful sort of somberness about it. But I think with Saturn and Pisces, like I said, to me, I, when I always think about that, I'm like, gosh, it is like the call to protecting our sacred space, um, to walking away from those things that are draining our energy. You got, do you, are you holding this up This is the card? eight of oh, yes. cups from Chris I, Ann's Lightseers. Yes, Sears, I love that. Yes, I love Sears that. Tarot. Tarot. Yeah, yeah, see her walking away from walking away from what is no longer serving her but there is a sense of loss yeah. and yeah. separation with it you know you need to go but 
there's still some longing, that Pisces longing, but that yeah. Saturn separation. Yeah, you can really yeah. feel it in yeah. the card. Mm -hmm. And so what's beautiful about the integration of the tarot with astrology is that, especially if you're working with clients, but even if you're just working with yourself and you're studying your own charts and your own transits, to have the visual images, right, that can really sort of draw you in, right, to the energy and help you sort of sink deep into it, I think is, um, you know, it's just like a, a priceless thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's beautiful that we have both of these practices to work with, you know, together in that way. So let's let's try another one. And I love that you have that deck. I have that deck. I don't want anything to use that one, but that's a really good one. So I love that you have that and you're using that. Um, so I'm going to show you another one. We've got another one here because we've got Mars. Oh, we've got a couple people at Saturn Returns. Oh, okay. In the comments. Yeah. That if you are in your Saturn return, the Eight of Cups is a beautiful, beautiful card, I think, for you to just sort of meditate with and work with. And you'd be surprised when I meditate with the Tarot. It's not, I mean, I don't do anything fancy. I, you know, I just sit the card sort of in front of me, right? And it sort of becomes my um, point of focus mm -hmm. as I'm mm -hmm. meditating. And you'll be surprised, I think, what will arise within your spirit, you know, associated with that energy, especially if you're under a transit, right, that's calling forth that energy anyway. Mm. You know? What else we got going on right now? We got Mars in Capricorn. So let's look at the card that is associated with uh, Mars in Capricorn. That's going to be the Three of Pentacles. That's oh. one of my favorite cards. I always pull it. <laughs> so now there's a lot. There's a couple of different depictions so this one's a little bit different from Cyril but we're going to talk about we're going to talk about sort of like maybe how different artists depict you know the three of pentacles and how they're sort of calling forth the sort of Mars energy and the Capricorn energy in this particular deck I you know Siri Marchetto is really sort of focusing in on I want to say the perfecting and the honing of a craft you know what I mean if you look um, you know, in this card, I mean, that's really kind of what you see, right? You see someone very, very focused. You know, there's a lot of sort of discipline, right, that's coming through here. You know, there's a lot of um, real concentrated attention on something, and you get the sense that this person is a real kind of craftsperson in a way, you know. So, so anyway, in this particular deck, that's sort of like the energy, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, that he's sort of calling forth, and I love that. Now, in the deck that uh, Celeste is holding up, what you're, what I feel like you're seeing it's a little bit of that that we just talked about, but it's, it is combining that, right, with the crafts of others. And so it brings in that sort of collective feel of, right, okay, you know, my Mars and Capricorn energy, right, I'm honing my craft, right, and I am perfecting my craft and I'm honoring that, but I'm also combining that with the skill set of others, right, who have found their mission and we're doing something even bigger together, right? And that's the sort of uh, social and collective feel of Capricorn energy, right? that has so much to do with sort of like manifesting our larger mission, mm -hmm. right, and purpose in the world. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at the Three of Pentacles depicted in that way, and there are many decks that depict the Three of Pentacles in that way, that's what you see, and I love that. I love that as well. And I think that's a beautiful, beautiful card to meditate on during this time, not only because Mars is passing through Capricorn, obviously it is, and, and, and that's, you know, we're, we're under that. But, you know, we've got Pluto moving into Aquarius, which we may talk about in a little bit, but there's going to be a lot of, I think, you know, there's a, there's a collective call right now, I think, for people to sort of honor kind of, you know, their individual sort of mission but then to really sort of call forth their tribe mm -hmm. right and really combine those giftings with other people to do something you know yep. really quite and with but, Mars okay. trying Jupiter it's like I'm Mars trying <laughs> Jupiter yes 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 yeah yes. it's like if you expand by bringing in others mm -hmm. who can have skill sets that you maybe don't have and you work together to you know to, three minds are better than one to, mm -hmm. to achieve some kind of goal. So remembering that you don't have to do everything alone, I think is important with this card. Very, very important. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, I love how you're doing the current transits that we're having. That's so perfect. Yeah. Why, why not? Right. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So let's see. What else? Let's see. What else did I 
pull in to talk about there's so many things that we can that we can pull in to talk about this is an example we're not necessarily under this transit right now but i just okay. love this card is this card is just be a beautiful mm -hmm. one in this particular deck so this is the um this is the nine of pentacles um from the legacy of the divine tarot Ooh. And I just, every time I look at this card, I just get, it's like magical to me. But this, the, you know, the card, the astrological correspondence for the Nine of Pentacles is Venus and Virgo. And one of the things that I love about this card is because, you know, Venus, you know, from a classical standpoint, we don't often think of Venus being incredibly happy in Virgo, you know, from a, you know, a classical standpoint. However, I think one of the more positive manifestations, I think, to conceptualize that energy is that, you know, really, especially when you look at this card, is the kind of like harvesting of the fruit of your labor. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, Venus being the fruit and Virgo being the labor. And so I love that when you're working with the tarot, it can also help you embrace um, a wider spectrum, right, of meanings, you know, that's that, you know, than you may, you know, hear about or kind of naturally, what do you got there? I love that too. Look at that. Yeah, to me, the nine of pentacles, it's the harvest card, you know? What I mean? Yes, I call it the independent woman card. Oh, I like it's that like, too. It's like, you yeah. have done the work. Now it's time for you to empress in a way to enjoy your harvest. Yeah. Yes. yes, and Venus, yeah. <clears throat> although it is in fall in Virgo, it has other forms of term and um, other forms of like the, the less the dignities are, aren't the essential ones. Right. So it's not a bad thing necessarily to no, have. No. And like the, I think like with Vesta, the, the Vestal Virgins, sure. these women who had like this autonomy within themselves, they did not, I mean, they weren't allowed to have partners, but anyway, mm -hmm. um, they, they had freedom from some of the, the demands of partnership and were elevated sure. in some ways. So I yeah, think it's a, yeah, a beautiful, yeah. a beautiful card. I love when I pull this. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you can see how, you know, those of you who are working with clients, um, I'll just take a little segue here to tell you how I integrate the tarot into my astrology readings. It's very simple. What I do, honestly, I pull a card for every house, um, you know, of the chart. And I also pull two cards for the center, a sort of like a central message and focus. But what will happen as you do that is you will see, right, because everything is connected. Everything, absolutely everything is connected. And so you will see how the tarot mirrors what's going on astrologically for a client and vice versa. And it will not only help you in your um, sort of like interpretations and delineations, but it will help you develop a language and a way of communicating with your clients that helps them to sort of dig deeper and sink deeper right into what is manifesting for them, but also where the potentials lie, right? Because when you're looking at an image, you, we all know the saying, right? An image is worth a thousand words. When you're looking at an image, there is so much that opens up, right? Language is expanded in a way that, you know, we can't even really sort of, you know, explain, but, but yeah, I mean, so, so it all kind of opens up and so I encourage you, I, I do, you know, if you're, if you're doing readings, try it, try it mm -hmm. and see, and see what happens and see, um, how the two practices mirror each other and how appreciative I think your clients will be for sort of having, um, kind of that extra tool, you know, that helps them, um, understand and, and, and call forth their own wisdom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So someone's asking, M M Martine is asking, isn't real sky astrology more safe or true than Western tropical astrology? Just asking because I'm curious. Is it, say that again, the first part? I, I... <laughs> uh, they're asking about real sky astrology. So Vedic oh, astrology. Like Vedic astrology. Okay, I'm sorry. I was... So astrology based on <laughs> Vedic astrology is based on the constellations, mm -hmm. whereas tropical astrology is based on, or okay. Western astrology, the timing yeah. of the seasons and everything. So, you know, Celeste, you may, may be able to talk better to this than I can, but I'm going to tell you my, my take on it. I, and I'll just, is you know, to be real transparent, I've taken just one Veda class. So I'm certainly a very Western astrologer. I took one Veda class and that was it. But what I noticed, you know, as I was going through that class, and it was really fascinating, 
Um, so in that class, we sort of used our own sort of Vedic charts, mm -hmm. you know, to learn. And what I realized is that although the systems are different, right? I mean, it is kind of like a different system. Mm -hmm. In the end, if you follow all the rules, you know what I mean? If you follow their, you know what I mean? What you're supposed to do somehow for me anyway, I ended up with sort of the same dilemma delineation it wasn't like it was telling me something different mm -hmm. sure it was a different system it was a different kind of path i had to follow right if i was really going to follow all the vedic rules correctly but once i did it was like wow that's it's that's sort of you know what i learned you know when i was doing western astrology and, and studying my chart and so i you know, you know with all these things you know whether we're talking about different astrological systems whether we're talking about different house systems you know within a particular system with all these things what i have found is that if you follow your heart and i know this is going to sound real wishy-washy i know it is but if you follow what speaks to you authentically you'll end up exactly where you need to be but celeste i'm gonna let you speak to it maybe yes. it's a little bit more technically yeah <laughs> i think well i have not studied vedic i know it's very accurate as well but I think all the different symbol, all the different systems can work. Yeah, for the person who is practicing them, you come into a kind of like a collaboration, a three of pentacles between you and the divine mm -hmm. and the system you're using in order to receive this knowledge. And they're not 12 signs and 12, of, you know, out there, the 12 signs in here. So I've both, both all of the different systems work. People use them for different things. And yeah, so there's nothing more right, true, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I think, yeah, is how I would answer it too. And I like how you have experienced looking at your chart with the two different systems. Two roads can take you to the same place. All roads lead to Rome. Well, they used to. <laughs> Anymore. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so that was my experience. Yeah, that was my experience with that. Yeah. Um, are there other questions? I'm sorry, I'm not. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 go ahead. You okay. can keep going with, um, oh. yeah, um, K Swartz is manifesting nine pentacles. I'm just uh, checking them out and I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so the let's, cards. Let's... Oh, wait, one more thing. Lotus Lil, Lotus Lee says the cards always tell the same story as a transit reading. So when I first started my Instagram lives, I would talk about the astrology of current events. And then at the end, it's suggestions for what to do with the current transits. And at the end, I'd pull three cards and they'd always say exactly what I just said. Mm -hmm. So yes, I use I use um, astrology and and uh, oracle or tarot together with clients. Like as to after at the at, after the reading or if there's some point where like I'm stuck on a point, I'll just pull a card to get confirmation or correction mm -hmm. of the way I'm supposed to go. Or I do a whole astro and oracle with people like you do as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's such a yeah it's 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 really powerful it really is and although i've been doing it for a long time i'm always in awe you know what i mean it's always like the magic always strikes me mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. let's see what's another lots of things you know what i'm going to talk about this one because i know you have an aries Ooh. moon um good so, <laughs> so talk about the emperor okay so this is the card the major arcana card in the tarot that you know we typically associate with the sign of aries and this is called the emperor and many of you may know this this is from the thoth deck and here we've got the emperor from the light seers tarot um but you know you can look at both of these cards and you know you begin to sort of you know the, the key words of aries i think begin to be naturally evoked right when we talk about autonomy when we talk about personal power when we talk about the harnessing of the personal will um, you know emperors emperor energy doesn't ask permission right emperor energy knows exactly who it is right and it sort of you know manifests that in the world exercises that you know it's not afraid to make um, an impact and you know there's lots of things that we could talk about if we could if we were to really delve into all the symbolism really really deeply right so we're kind of just scratching the surface but i want to give people a sense you know especially if they don't work with the tarot and astrology together to just sort of see how powerful it can be and how um, you know, 
if you're just if you just really exercise your intuition you know what i mean i mean sure you have to pay attention i think just to core meanings and things but the secret sauce i think of working with uh, you know tarot and astrology is sort of after you've done all that you know after you've done the study after you've brought in you know the information and you you know it, it's to really kind of let your intuition kind of guide you to your own personal style and that's kind of the glue i think that holds it all together but anyways um yeah, so this is a lovely card to make. If you've got Aries energy, if you've got Sun in Aries, if you've got an Aries moon, if you're a rising Aries, anything in Aries, you know, you can really sort of meditate on this card and kind of sink deep into its symbolism and sort of kind of let, you know, the spirit of, I want to say, you know, autonomy and personal power and will, you know, just sort of sink into that. But um, anyway, yeah, uh, Aries card, that's the emperor there. Yes. All right, let's see. Let's look at the card for Scorpio. Let's, yeah, let's look at the card for Scorpio. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the outer planets because, you know, classically, like when, you know, when these correspondences were originally done, you know, only really the sun through Saturn were included. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. in some of the more modern decks, you will see the outer planets brought in. But when we're talking about Pluto energy, we can certainly, because Pluto rules Scorpio, we can look at the card that rules um, Scorpio in the tarot. And then I'm also going to show you in some of the more modern decks, um, the card that a lot of people use for Pluto as well. Okay. So this is the card that we most associate with Scorpio, right? And the major arcana of the tarot. Of course, it's the death card, right? Major arcana number 13. There you go. <laughs> And you can see, I love that you're using that deck because you can see how different artists really sort of kind of call forth this energy in the work that they're doing, right? So in this, in the Thoth deck here, you know, when I look at this, whew, I see so much, right? So I see, um, I definitely see sort of the, uh, the life, death, rebirth cycle here in this particular card. It's almost this skeleton is sort of holding like a, a skid or something. And it's almost as if, you know, there's this digging down deep, this uprooting, this turning over. Like every time I look at this card, you know, I mean, that's kind of like what I see. And of course, we know that that is so much associated with both Scorpio energy and Pluto energy. Um, mm -hmm. And then if you look at the card that um, Celeste is uh, holding up there in the Light Seers Tarot, you know, gosh, when I look at that one, I definitely see this sense of like a new world. It's like there's a new world being born, right, as you're looking through, you know, but it's almost like to get there, to get there, there is a kind of destruction that has to happen, mm -hmm. right, because it's almost like you're looking straight through this person, this shadow, that's another good word, mm -hmm. um, I think, for Pluto energy and Scorpio energy. It's, it's almost like when I look at that card, I see more of the light getting to the other side, right? When we begin to sort of really integrate our shadows and do the kind of shadow work that Pluto and Scorpio energy calls us to do. So there's so much, right, that you can, you know, as you're, and, and you can see how when you're working with different decks, for me, there's like different things that are evoked depending on, you know, just, just depending, right? And so yeah. um that's why it's, i see this as like you have to release something that you maybe don't necessarily want to mm -hmm. in order to get to the other side so there's sure. this like morning i feel like this yeah. is like a morning that. outfit but there's brighter pastures on the other side once you get there yeah mm -hmm. i love that i love that um so now in some of the more modern decks, I'm going to show you this one. Um, Pluto is sometimes associated with the judgment cards. I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to show that to you. Yeah, I've got the judgment uh, and this card here. Card is called, yeah. So this now, this is actually, this is the Tarot of Dreams. Okay. But, um, and the, one of the reasons I really do like working with this deck, especially if you're not incredibly familiar with the correspondences yet, is because Sarah Marchetti in this deck, on every single card, he'll write the symbols very clearly. So you see you see the Pluto here. Yes. Um, and this is a judgment card, and you see the judgment in the light series, too. But again, you know, for me, every time I look at this card, you know, I just, <laughs> I just think, again, 
the life, death, rebirth, I think of resurrection, right? I think of the new story and the new chapters that can begin. But yes, it is, of course, only after you've let, you know what I mean, something, you know, mm -hmm. go. You know, you've always got to leave something from the past in order to sort of move forward into your next evolution. But I think that the judgment card for me is one of the very beautiful, beautiful depictions of that. And I think you can see that in both of these, um, in both of these decks. But um, and it's like yeah. a spiritual awakening a spiritual, card, like, definitely. like answering mm. the call is what mm. I think of with this yeah, card. Yeah, like that's you answering the call, yeah. And it's a call that you can only answer, though, sort of like when you're, yeah, when you're ready, I think, to like step out of the old and into the new, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's a very, um, so anyways, but you can see, right, especially as, you know, we are, you know, we're on the verge of Pluto entering Aquarius. So this is a real good card to work with. And sometimes what I'll do, like not every um, planet sign combination, right, has a direct correspondence in a card. So for instance, if you wanted to work with the tarot and kind of really, um, you know, meditate on sort of Pluto entering Aquarius and kind of what, you know, what that might symbolize for you and what comes up for you, then you might take a card like Judgment and then you might combine it with the card for Aquarius, which is the star card. And so we could pull that out as well and take a look at that. So let me see, I'll use the same deck so we're not kind of mixing and matching decks here, but you could pull out the star card. And of hope and mm. healing and mm -hmm. mm, yeah and, and yeah. yeah so you could you and you could you know then begin to sort of work with them together mm. right and see mm -hmm. you know because working with both astrology and the tarot all of it is alchemy you know what I mean? It's like, this, you know, it's a beautiful alchemy. And so, you know, it's like, you, you know, you can think of it as you're sort of like mixing this beautiful brew together and you're kind of, you know, throwing in the judgment card, you're throwing in the star card and you're seeing what comes out. But, you know, some combination of this, right, is going to have some significance, right, for Pluto's transit through Aquarius. And of course, you know, we know um, Aquarius to be associated with the star card and there's so many things that we can talk about here you know the star card has an ethereal quality about it but yes we often talk about hope for me when i look at the star card it's got this sort of high and lifted up quality about it that i think um is you know so describes aquarius you know aquarius is of course we know it as a fixed air sign and so it rises steadily it likes to rise above the status quo. It likes to rise above the norms, right? And it likes for us to create something new. And um, I think as Pluto transits through Aquarius, you know, we're gonna we're gonna see how collectively and individually, right? Um, you know, we're using our innovative energies to create something new, to tear down systems and build them back up in a new way. All that good stuff. But anyway, that's another way you, you can work um, with the with the tarot, of course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Let's see. I love that. And then you could just also, like, you could pull a card, separate sure. the major arcana out. Because what I'm going to do after this now, I have my cards all separate. I'm going to pull a <laughs> card for the major arcana and see what do I need to focus on on the next mm -hmm. couple of days, which uh, of the, the planetary or sign energies that I need to develop for my, for my higher good. Ooh, well, yeah. Love that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, because we haven't talked about the court cards mm, yeah. in the tarot. Let's talk about the court cards. And, and why don't you, before you do that, talk about how you see the major arcana versus the minor arcana versus the court cards. Maybe just give us a summary when you pull that for someone or yourself. Sure. So the, the way I think of, um, and I guess all, all of this is sort of, you know, some. It, <laughs> I'm all because I feel I would like to think that I'm very intuitive, and so you know a lot. You know when I'm in the moment is what com what comes up is what comes up. But you know, when, you know um, when I think about what you're asking me, Celeste, when I the way I think of the major arcana, I think of those as sort of like the major life lessons in a way. It's like there's some there's some major theme, right? That things are coalescing around. And that's the way I kind of look and see, look at the major arcana. Because, like, when I'm doing my spreads, you know, for um, my personal readings, I think, you know, I'm pulling a total of 14 cards, mm -hmm. right? 
But the major arcana cards, if I were to pull those out, the ones that come up and look at them by themselves, I feel like that is telling me the overarching story. You know what I mean? Like, there it is, you know? Uh, and that's one way that I conceptualize the major arcana. And then the minor arcana are supporting characters in that story and they're really you know and again it's it, again it's all alchemy so it all works together so it's not but but there is something about pulling out the major arcana and 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 kind of appreciating um that overarching kind of headline i feel like that's coming through the reading um and that's kind of the way i conceptualize that and then you know when i look at the minor arcana i feel like you know they're sort of supporting uh events uh characters you know in that overarching theme that's evolving and the court cards often do for, for me in readings represent okay they often do represent people mm -hmm. i will say in my readings like real like people in our lives people in my clients lives. but the thing to realize about that is that if that card comes up it may represent a person in your life and i'll be very true that there may be a mundane event where yep that queen wands woman yep she's you know however the more important thing to realize is that that queen of wands or that court card or whatever came up is you. And there is something about that energy that's being mirrored back, you know, in that reading, because there's something about that energy that is speaking to you, um, either because you're being called, you know, to sort of manifest that. And maybe there's a person in your life that's mirroring that for you. And, you know, it's, you know, the universe is asking you to kind of take a look at that. And so I feel like, you know, that's always for me like the most important thing to realize like yeah this might be a specific person in your life but the reason this is coming up is because you're supposed to be accessing your fire right now mm -hmm. you're supposed to be you know sinking deep into your water or you're supposed to you know what i mean and so that's that's the way i think about those but yeah. i would love to hear celeste you know like how you conceptualize it because every uh practitioner is different and every practitioner brings in yeah just like a different different way and it all works right as mm -hmm. long as you're being you know if you're you're authentically yeah you know, i look at them very similarly like the core cards represent a, a person and the major arcana like this is a big theme it's not just it's not just uh, uh this week this day this is a big theme that you need to work on versus the minor arcana maybe this is just what you're dealing with today this week this mm -hmm. hour what have you it's more of a temporary experience I like so yeah I, I look at them very similarly i like that mm -hmm. um yeah so let's talk about the court cards the reason i want to talk about the court cards is because um they, their correspondences are very interesting um now, first of all, I think it's very important always, like, you know, again, you always work at following your intuition because, you know, that's that, that's the golden rule, I feel like, when you're working with these, working mm -hmm. with the tarot. However, there are traditional correspondences that we tend to associate with the court cards. Um, in particular, the, uh, the knights, the queens, you know, and the kings. In this particular deck, because I'm, I'm going to show you the thought deck that, the kings are kind of analogous to the princes, but you can think of this as the king of pentacles. Now, if you look at this card, and again, I love working with the thought because the artistry of this deck is such that the astrological symbolism becomes really, really evident sometimes. So when you're looking at this prince of pentacles or king of pentacles, you can see the bull here, can't you? Mm -hmm. right? So right away for me, you think Taurus, Taurus energy, <laughs> Taurus energy coming through strong, you know. Um, and so, yes, Taurus is very much associated with this card. However, there's an interesting mix with the court cards. And so we typically we might we might say if you were to pick up some textbooks, they would say that the king or the prince of pentacles rules from the last decan of Aries through the second decan of Taurus. And so he becomes a mixture of Aries energy and Taurus energy. Now, again, I mean, mm. I have, um, yeah, I mean, this is the other thing I'm going to tell you when you're working with the tarot. It is, it is really a magical experience because you are, when you work with the tarot, developing, I believe, a language. Mm -hmm. There's a language that the cards already represent, but when you begin to work with the tarot very personally, you begin to develop a personal tarot mm -hmm. language, right? Mm -hmm. And 
the more information, I guess, that you begin to gather and integrate, that information begins to be integrated into your language, right? So I say that to say that, like, you know, if you didn't, you know, whatever, if you didn't know what I just said, you know, that, oh, you know, he rules from the last decade of Aries through the second decade of Taurus, it wouldn't matter, right? Yeah. But once you begin to integrate in that information, there are layers of meaning. Yeah right that you know begin to sort of work their way into your language and so that's something i want people to sort of realize it is you don't have to necessarily learn a whole bunch of facts and stuff but but as you begin to learn more it just it kind of naturally gets you know integrated into your language but anyway that is um the king of the prince of pentacles and you can do that with pretty much every uh uh, court card. Yeah. I will say, with the exception of the pages. Now they're a little. Oh, bit I wanted to um, say something before we get to the pages. Okay. I would say with the the I use the different suits like pentacles. Mm -hmm. I would say a king of pentacles would likely be a male who's either who's an earth sun like Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus. So you can use them like that. Or sure, queen. you can. I'm, I yeah. know, I'm giving you the very, but yeah. Definitely. Yeah, you're giving us the details, which I love. Now, where did you, like, I've never studied that. Where, where do you have a reference to learn? Sure, so you can, um, well, the Book of okay. Thoth, okay, it's Alistair Crowley's book. You can, you can definitely go there. Um, there are other books, but they're all, yeah, they're all, I mean, the Book of Thoth is like, I think the classic one. But yeah, there's definitely that'll that'll go through mm -hmm. the 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 decans and and it'll also talk to you about sort of like we're not going to get too deep into this, but it's gonna it's gonna it'll also talk to you about um, sort of how the different planets and signs were assigned to the minor arcana, like what that Ooh. system was and how that that works, and um, you'll begin to see that the um, you know, if we were to take any uh, suit, let's take this, let, let, or any element, let's take, um, let's take the element of wands, which we associate with uh, fire. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you work with the tarot, you know this, right? But all of the correspondences within that particular suit are going to be, they're going to be fire signs, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is, let's take the Ace of Wands. Now, the Ace of Wands is like the beginning of beginnings. It's like the Big Bang. It actually does not have a specific association. It's like all fire Ace of Wands, right? Mm -hmm. But then when you get into the two, three, and the four of Wands, those are associated with the first fire sign, which is Aries. And the two of wands rules the first decan of Aries, the three of wands rules the second decan of Aries, and the four of wands rules the third decan of Aries, right? Then you can go to the five, six, and seven of wands, right? They rule the fixed fire sign, which we know as Leo. Mm -hmm. And so again, the five rules the first decan of Leo, the six rules the second decan of Leo, the third rules the third decan of Leo, and again, the last three cards, right, of the, mm -hmm. the pit cards, right, of the, of the wand suit. They're going to be eight, nine, and ten of wands, and they're going to rule the mutable part of fire, which is Sagittarius. And, of course, the eight of wands is going to rule the first decan, the nine is going to rule the second, the, the, the ten is going to rule the third. I, the only reason I lay that out for people is because there is a system here and an yeah. order. That and it's very sense. helpful to know yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that makes sense, yeah. right? And, um, that's another way, actually, that you can work with the tarot as well. So, like, for instance, right now, we are in the last decade of Capricorn, mm -hmm. aren't we? We mm -hmm. are. And so that means um, you are looking at the two, three, four of Pentacles, mm -hmm. right? Would, be, would rule the last decade of Capricorn. And so if you were looking for a card to meditate on, you know, that might represent the last decade of Capricorn, you might look at the four of Pentacles, right? And there's lots of things we could talk about the four of Pentacles. Actually, since, since I did that, I'm going to pull up my two. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll just uh, summarize that again for people in case people didn't catch that. So with all of the different cards in the minor arcana, the two, three, and four in each suit is the cardinal mm -hmm. signs. So it would be Aries would be fire, um, Capricorn would be earth, Libra would be air, and 
water, cancer <laughs> would be water. Mm -hmm. The second, five, six, and seven is the fixed signs of each of the suits. Right. The seven, eight, nine is the mutable sign. So you just, if you know that, you know exactly which you can, that'll help you go to which part of the, 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 the which, which suit and which decan, and then you just need to learn or have a guide for which planet is associated right. with that. Right. So here we have the Four of Pentacles. This is associated with the last deck and the last 10 degrees of Capricorn. It's associated with the sun, right, and mm -hmm. Capricorn energy. And so you can see we've got the two different decks here. I love that. So this is from the Thoth deck here. And then Celeste is holding up from the Light Seers Tarot. And every time, so we'll start maybe with the Thoth here, but every time I look at this, right, you can, you can look down on this and you can see the structure and order of the four and the boundary of the four, mm -hmm. right? And so when I look at this, I think, yeah, structure, order, boundary, foundation, right? All those things that we associate with the number four that we might associate with Capricorn energy, right? Um, this is the time of the year where we are hollowing out and and building a foundation right for the next you know for, for, for the rest of the year really um and there's some watches here every card's got a shadow side right so we're also talking about the four of pentacles we don't want to get too crystallized okay. we don't want to get too stuck we don't want to get you know too rigid right so those are some things that you might want to watch for um but anyways, but then and then in the deck that uh, Celeste is on the light sister, I love that because, it, you know, when you see the woman there sort of she's almost like she's clutching something in a way. Right. And you start she's thinking clutching her purse. Yeah. Like kind of being purse, possessive right? of, yeah. her, of her wealth and her possessions, holding mm -hmm. on to it, being frugal, all these things. Right. And so then. Yeah start thinking about other words yes like yes you know what are you clutching what are you holding on to you know what are you but then there's very you know positive manifestations yes frugality nothing wrong with that sometimes conservation right focus of energy so all those things right we can we can sort of evoke those things when we're looking at this card and anyway so so that's another way you can work with the tarot. Okay. So, anyway. so there's a couple questions okay. on Sure. So the, the what is the name of the book that teaches you everything about this? It's the Thoth, right? By Alice. The Book of Thoth. Thoth. Yeah, I would. I mean, it's, it can be a little hard to get through, but he does go through everything that I've talked about in more. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and it's Alistair Crawley. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And are there any modern takes on that book that you'd recommend, or just there people? is. Is actually, let me see. There's there's almost like a Cliff Notes version. I keep forgetting. I'm gonna pull it up right now and I'm gonna tell you the name of yeah. it. There's <laughs> like a Cliff and, Notes version of the oh, yeah, yeah. Wands are fire, air are swords, pentacles are earth, and cups are, are, are water. Sometimes you see um, roses for water, sometimes you see coins for earth. Yeah. Oh, and then what is a decan, Kay Swartz is asking. So a decan, each sign is composed of, of, of 30 degrees, 0 to 29. So 0 to 9 is the first decan, 12, 10 to 19 is the second decan, and 2029 20, is the third decan of each of the signs. So it's just a way of splitting the signs into three different, three different parts. And they have like little differences and nuances in the nature of how the energy is expressed. Oh. All right, so I'm going to hold up the cover of this. I think you'll be able to see it. It's on my phone. But this is called Understanding uh, um, Alistair Crowley's Thoth Tarot. It is written by, if I'm saying this right, Lon Duquette. But I'm going to hold this up for you guys and... Um, I can also send this to you, Celeste, if people want to know. But there is a kind of Cliff Notes version of the, of the Book of Thoughts. So this is a good one um, also to take a look at. And I think he does a really good job of summarizing that as well. Okay, um, that's great. I should get that book because I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't studied the Thoth version so much, but I love using the astrology correspondence in with the, with the yeah. Tarot deck. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's great it's great um the other cards i mean yeah i want to say so the ace let's talk a little bit about the aces i guess in the minor arcana as well because... oh did you want to do the pages yeah, oh yeah, okay. yeah thank you, you the <laughs> sorry i interrupted you no, when we're about to do the pages so we like... talk about how knights queens and kings can often be specific people knights can be a little younger mm -hmm. um sometimes mm -hmm. 
queens, feminine energy, women, or, or yeah, kings, masculine yeah. energy, potentially men, mm -hmm. or people who identify as such. Right. Yeah. Right. And the, and the masculine energy within each person. I mean, that's the other. That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. It's like it's always it's always about you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's something about that energy that is speaking to you right now, or that you're meant to learn from right now. And that's mm -hmm. it's really important to kind of embrace that. But the reason I wanted to just talk a little bit about and the pages can often represent younger people in our mm -hmm. life. You know, for um, a lot of practitioners see the pages also sometimes as messengers you know maybe because back in the day you know younger people were used as messengers i don't know but like you know so some people will see the pages in that way some decks will be oh we can't see your face dawn we just oh, see I'm the card sorry. okay there you go like... that's all right <laughs> which which page is that is that so this is the page of cups oh, okay. um and in this particular deck this is a thought deck the page of cups is very piscine in this particular deck but in most decks i do find the page of cups to be very piscean even though we might not traditionally say oh the, you know the page of cups is represents pisces whenever i look at you know any page i'm like oh, that's very pisces <laughs> but again you know it's all about but you know the page of cups is in you know the suit and the element of water and so really any water sign right can be represented by the page it's just that sometimes when you look at certain images you're like gosh that looks so pisces to me this particular one looks very pisces to me even the mm -hmm. one the lights used to all feels a little bit pisces to me well. yeah i love this i love this image with uh it's like the it's there's a famous painting that looks similar to this oh yeah yeah, yeah. so um but but yeah, so the pages don't, from a like traditional standpoint, don't necessarily have a specific um, astro like sign, you know, associated with it. But um, each deck that you use, like the artist will sometimes kind of call forth a different sign depending, you know. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that because it's also the same with the aces. You know, the aces, is that, um, you know, don't. Is that cup uh, Sorry, yes, this is is the ace of cups um you know the aces don't necessarily have a specific sign that we say that they represent either we I, you know when i see the ace of cups come up you know i just think water generally but all aces are about beginnings mm -hmm. right and so you know this is something new you know with the ace of cups you know, associated with the element of water whether it's a new relationship a new heart opening a new connection a new you know what i mean but but um but anyway so that's that's the aces there as well and so yeah i love that depiction of the and actually the um in the lights you used to go yeah I always i do there is like this you know like this heart opening i like mm -hmm. that yeah um mm -hmm. yeah this is one of my favorite decks let's see okay where else can we go um <laughs> are there any other questions i'd love let's to see yeah there were some great questions thank you everyone for asking questions uh let me see if there are any new ones since, since i looked okay i think i answered that i think uh, oh yeah lizzie says you need cliff notes to read crowley yes yes <laughs> <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little rough to get why don't we a shuffle one of our decks and pull a card for a collective energy reading sure. to finish right. up yeah sure. let's see that. that's a beautiful thing to do so you're going to pull one and i'm yeah. going to pull one right we're, so we're gonna both going to gonna pull one for a collective energy reading today we have mars and capricorn exalted in capricorn our energy our drive our focus can have some that structure to stick with things that may be difficult trying jupiter the mm. planet of expansion yeah mercury's treading over its old ground is going into capricorn tomorrow i believe hopefully i'm right let me look <laughs> uh, this the moon is in aquarius yeah mm. yes it is yeah, Mercury goes into Capricorn tomorrow at seven around seven PM Pacific time. Yeah. Okay. Collective food for thought. Food for thought, yeah. Okay. Ooh. I got so I got the King of Cups. Ooh, I, love I feel like this is a call for us to have 
emotional mastery, I think, which is as much as we can. I mean, we're human mm -hmm. beings this year and do what we need to do to stay grounded because there's going to be a lot of, of intense energies coming up, especially with um, Pluto going back into Aquarius next Saturday. You know, mm -hmm. big seismic shifts coming to the collective. And I think of the first eclipse season is going to bring a lot of unexpected mm -hmm. amplification of intense energy. Mm -hmm. The, mm -hmm. the lunar eclipse in Libra and then the solar eclipse in Aries conjunct Chiron, the wounded healer, and then the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. I mean, this spring is going to be very intense. So whatever tools you need, whether it's breath work, whether it's meditation, whether it's mm -hmm. yoga, hiking, whatever, to stay grounded, and in your emotion, you, you get some emotional mastery. I think we need to yeah. focus on that. I mm -hmm. love that. So it's really interesting that we both pulled um, face cards. We both pulled core cards. I pulled the Queen of Swords. Ah. Um, and so as you were talking, even some of the things that you were saying, I was thinking that for the Queen of Swords as well. But one of my big key words for the Queen of Swords is the word uh, discernment. That's my the word, word of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's the word discernment uh the queen of swords and i'll you know from an astrological perspective she rules from the last degrees of virgo into the first two decades of libra just so we know but, but you know for me she's about keeping the filters on right because to me that's a lot of what discernment is about is keeping you know and it's, you know, we have South Node in Libra right now. And as you say, we're going to be moving into eclipse season. Um, and I think that there are, certainly with the South Node in Libra, there are lots of things, I think, that we are being called to sort of release, especially related to our relationship patterns, mm -hmm. um, releasing things that are not in alignment. And when it comes to alignment and kind of like, you know, sort of recognizing what is in alignment and what isn't, that key word of discernment becomes very, very important. And you can see in this particular deck, I actually love this depiction. This is called the new millennial Thoth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a more modern take on the Thoth deck. But um, I love that, you know, you see this queen here, she's sitting there, her, her eyes are actually closed. Mm -hmm. She is, she's got a sword in hand and she's actually holding what looks like a head or a mask <laughs> you know, in her hand. And so when I look at this, I always think that there is like this allegiance to authenticity and truth. She mm -hmm. cuts away at all of the BS, right? She's not afraid to tear away the mask, not only off of herself, but maybe even, you know, also off of others if necessary, right? She's got that kind of boldness about her right and she sits very strong in that truth and i think that this has relevance not only we've got the south node in libra and so there's a lot of cutting away and shedding of masks there's a lot of sitting deep and real and strong in our authenticity but that's going to get amplified when pluto moves into aquarius because aquarius again an air sign right and this is an air card uh, you know, the sword is associated with the element of air. When Pluto moves into Aquarius, yes, those masks are coming mm -hmm. off. <laughs> you know? In so many ways, I mean, collectively and individually, um, each and every one of us have Pluto transitioning into Aquarius in some part of our chart. And I promise you that transit will demand that we, um, that we release some mask, some falsehood, some element of inauthenticity, right, that has been holding us back. And so I think she's maybe speaking to a little bit of that as well. I love that. I absolutely love that. Yes. Yeah. And, um, compassion is another word uh, Lizzie said here for the King of Cups. Yeah, trying to lean into our compassion, realizing we're all human beings going through experiences and yeah, not everyone thinks the same way we do. I think that's an important card thing to remember with the queen of yeah. Thor's and just seeing people jump down other people's throats just 
like immediately without just mm -hmm. yeah at times yeah. something that's very disturbing that i think could really amplify in yeah. during pluto and aquarius if we're not and careful i love that you bring that in right because again she is she is largely a libra card mm -hmm. and so embracing that word compassion that we brought in for the king mm -hmm. of cups and yes recognizing that there's all different kinds of people in this world, all different opinions, all different viewpoints, all different backgrounds and circumstances that have led us to believe some of the things that we believe, embrace some of the ideologies that we have embraced. And we need to have a little bit of compassion for that or we'll never get anywhere. Mm -hmm. We can't always be pointing the finger at the other side saying it's their fault or, or what, you know what yeah. I mean? And so because she is a Libra card, I think she embraces that as well. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And I love when you point your finger at someone, there are four po fingers pointing back at yeah. you. Oh, yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as well. Yeah. There was, yeah. Do you have time for one more question? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. someone was asking about reverse cards. Do you read reverse cards? Here's the funny yeah. thing about me and reversals. Yeah. I am one of those tarot practitioners I try not to read reversals, meaning I will go through my deck sometimes and I'll say, let me make sure everything is <laughs> right up, right up, right up. But the reason I think it's funny is because I could do that all day long and I will still end up with a reversal somewhere. So do I read reversals? Yes, but not necessarily because I'm like, you know, I, I literally like I will try to avoid them, but they, they come in anyway. And the way I interpret in reversals is a little bit the way I might interpret a retrograde planet. So mm -hmm. I might think about delays. I might think about an internalization of that energy. I might sometimes think about a reversal of the energy, but less so the reversal, more like the internalization, more like the delay. Um, you know, potentially maybe there's a challenge in the manifestation of the energy. That's the way I would typically um interpret a reversal but of course you've always got to use your intuition because when you're working with the tarot especially when you're reading cards in combination sometimes a reversal will come up and it'll be working with the card that's maybe above it or below it in such a way that there's like a flow of energy that you're picking up on and that's why the reversal came in so you know what i mean it's it, you know it is an intuitive practice but generally that's the way i look at it Reverse. Yes. And Kay Swartz asked advice on blending intuition and the definition of cards because she can get stuck mm -hmm. by this card means this. I always say trust what your intuition says right off the bat. Because Yeah, you, usually the first thing that occurs to you is the thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then and then after that, you know, you might be able to layer on a traditional core meaning, right? But usually the first thing that occurs like that, that's the thing. That's the thing that's going through. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yes. Well, this has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you for sharing so much knowledge. I learned so much from you. And can you share how people can find you and what you offer? Sure. So you can find me at wild witch astrology on instagram you can also find me um my website is wildwitchastrology.com so those are probably the two main ways to find me um and what else did you ask oh what i offer i mostly do i do personal readings so i really love doing personal readings you can book online with me if you want to you know maybe at some point i'll offer a class or two i'm working on it but yeah um and if i do offer a class it will be on the integration of tarot and astrology but yeah so that's that that's how you find me and that's what i offer um, well people are getting okay. great comments everyone you can follow you can follow dawn by just clicking the arrow or me if you're new to me yes so yeah this was absolutely wonderful thank you so much for sharing people are just sharing the love oh um eva wants to know your big three. Oh sure my son's in cancer my moon is in taurus and i'm a rising aquarius yes yeah. it can totally feel it and the moon is in your side today and the people are feeling the love for you so i hope oh. you i hope you feel it coming through dawn oh, i do thank you <laughs> Well, thank you so much for, for joining and sharing your wisdom. I will add you as a collaborator so you could just accept it. It'll go on your wall oh, thank you so as well. So if you much. Want. I'm so appreciative. Okay. I really, really love this. Thank you guys for listening.
Thanks. Have a beautiful rest of the day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.